I grew up on a farm in Kaitaia up north. It was pretty busy, uh, but good. It was a good upbringing. Growing up in Samoa, there's not a lot to do apart from working in the plantation and doing jobs. So rugby after school was, was one of those things that me and my mates were getting into. And that's how I fell in love with the sport. Ended up being selected for the secondary school team for Samoa and we tour New Zealand. And that's when I got picked up by Kelston Boys High School and they wanted some players to come over on scholarship. Well, I was 18 at the time when I was picked for Manu Samoa. The principal called me in the office and our principal at that time was Graham Henry. And he, um, I remember him telling me, you know, you cannot go, you have to stay and finish your school. But for me, I was, I was just too excited to go and I left school and went, went on tour with the Manu Samoa team to UK. My main goal is to be an international player and uh, now I, I achieved that goal and um, I just want to play for Mr. Samuel. So you're hoping that they'll be teaching you a fair amount? I'm hoping they're going to look after me. <laughs> we met because I'm a physio and my boss was physio for the Manu at that time. Then Siossi got a contract in England, so he went back to England, to Exeter, and I went not long after that to return to work in England. From that day on, I kind of pursued her and we started to hang out overseas. Once we started officially dating, we dated for nine months, then we got engaged. And then nine months later, we were married. And nine months after that, we had Torrance, our first child. Rugby was a dream for me, and to be able to play professionally, it was a really good experience, a dream come true. Moving to Italy with my family, signing two years with a club called Viadana, it was an exciting time. It's the first game of the season for my new club, and I remember the game was going really well, and our team was doing quite well. And it was in the second half, and I remember carrying the ball and going into to the contact and, and remember getting hit on my head. Um, someone just came in, dropped a shoulder and hyperextended my neck and everything just went black. I remember waking up and I was lying on the ground and I could see, I could see my hand facing uh, the opposite way. And, and I knew it was my hand because I always write my, my ainga or my family on, on my wrist, but I couldn't feel it. So I, I knew something was so seriously wrong. My focus was not on the game at all. I heard that someone was injured. Time went on and on, and I was thinking, man, this person must be injured quite badly. And then one of the girls said to me, is that Siossi who's down? And I said, oh, I don't know, uh, not sure. And then by that time, they were starting to bring him off the field on a stretcher. And I quickly handed off times um, to a friend and then went down to the, the sideline. When they stretched him off, I was just really scared and worried. And I didn't know how bad his injury was, but I think like anyone, you just think the worst. So they worked out when I had the impact on my head. I moved my neck so far that the, one of the ligaments between C1 and C2 broke and it moved the bone, the bones moved and it touched the spinal cord and it bruised the spinal cord. The specialist described it to us, he said, imagine you're on the edge of a cliff and you're virtually all the way over and somehow, somehow you just managed to pull yourself back and that's how close you were to dying. 
at the time, I didn't have any fear whatsoever. For some reason, I had peace with what was going on with me. And it made me think of, you know, I grew up in a church and I knew of our Heavenly Father and the love that He has for us. And I know my mom and my dad, they get up early in the morning and the last thing they do at night is to pray for us wherever we are uh, in the world. And I, that gave me peace knowing that my, my family's praying for me. And I just, I knew that my Heavenly Father's got me even though I just couldn't feel my hands or any part of my body. It was quite challenging just to watch Yossi and watch him not being able to do things. I remember going uh, home and then coming back one time and finding him um, slumped down on the bed because uh, he'd needed help to sit up and then he got tired and he couldn't move so he just kind of slid down sideways. We were fortunate to have very good friends who took us into their home and we stayed with them. They fed us and so basically I just looked after Siossi. But thankfully, uh, with perseverance and determination, he um, got better and better. Throughout my injury, I just had in the back of my mind that I was, I was going to get back uh, playing again and I was going to get better. That was, that was the goal and that's what I, I put my mind into and I thought, OK, uh, it's just a matter of time before I, I get well and then back into it. But when we saw the specialist and he explained it, how I was really lucky to get to walk away alive. And then he told me about my brother, like, look, you've got a brother that is actually sitting on a wheelchair because of a similar injury. And for him to tell me that, it kind of, it had home because uh, I was his carer for, uh, for when he got injured. Uh, 2000, he broke his neck in a scrum up north in New Zealand. And I remember getting a phone call that he's been taken to the to the hospital and we went up there and he was paralyzed. And I just knew that God it's close this door, but he's also gonna open a door. We were geared up to stay in Italy and then all of a sudden we were thinking about going home. He had peace about it and I think through his lead I felt peace as well. I knew we were coming home. I knew we had family here who would look after us. That whatever plan, it was what it was going to be. I had no idea what I was going to do. Seriously, I said to Katie, oh, we'll just, I'll just go find a job and work. But God spoke to her about me, like, why don't you go back and study? Why don't you finish your degree and, and see what's going to happen after that? So I studied for two years to finish my degree in sport and rec. And at the end of that, I felt like I wanted to be a teacher. And that's when an opportunity came up to come and work here at Alfreston College, in a school not far from here, where our kids go. There are a lot of kids like myself that are out in our schools where going and thinking rugby is the answer, the dream, but it's so much more. And I guess I want to inspire them. I want to be a, a, someone of influence. I love Siossi's passion for the next generation. I love how he invests into growing young people. He's always come across to me as someone who who can really speak life into others. So when he decided to become a teacher, I knew he would be a good teacher. I guess the lesson for us was to, to listen to the Holy Spirit and to have a personal relation with God. 
because he has a plan and he has a purpose for us. And he's a good, good father who wants to give good gifts to us. And just by trusting in him, being planted in the church and listening and, and learning these principles, they're godly principles and applying them in our life. That's the message that we, we got out of that.